got kids in the background. It's I'm not. All right, folks, this is Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro Live, a special treat. We are moving more into the high school direction. We've got to start off with the high program. So we had a special treat for you a couple weeks ago, but one of the premier programs in the area. We're here at Grand Prairie High School Media Day, live from the sack, right across from the club Gopher Ball, a place that I grew up hearing stories about wanting to play playoffs and play playoff games. And, uh, the new head man, the head man in charge over here. I'm gonna go ahead and let you introduce yourself, sir. So tell our audience a little bit more about this program, yourself, and a little bit more about your football history. Sir. Well, my name is Tony Tatamy. I'm the head football coach at Grand Prairie High School and athletic coordinator. We're going on our sixth year. And um, it seems like only yesterday we just, we got here. So now we're into our second middle school class that's going to be seniors and uh, in the four year period. and. We're excited about this year. It's been a hot, hot camp, but uh, kids have had adjusted to it well. Today's media day. We've got a lot of kids out here taking pictures, and we're excited about that. All right, Coach. Well, I mean, just from my – I grew up in the area. I, I personally went to Lamar High School, but I always heard stories and saw the Gopher Bowl. It's a storied place in, in North Arlington – excuse me, in North Grand Prairie and uh, North Texas football history. And I never had a chance to just take a look at the school, this beautiful facility you guys have. You guys have a, a beautiful school. Tell us about some of all the things Grand Prairie High School has to offer young men in this area, why they should make the choice, if they do have the choice, to come on over here and become a gopher. Well, first thing, we get, there's great people. We got great administration. Uh, we got great culture with our kids. Our kids enjoy being around each other. Um, being here six years now, going on six years, I've had a chance to walk the halls, walk the walk. Um, it's an exciting place to be. It's our kids right now that are really reaching out and touching other kids, and that makes it very special. Facility-wise, our location. We got a great location. We're right down the street from AT&T Stadium. I mean, you got all, where we're at is a great location. Yes, we got the bowl right here, the Gopher Warrior Bowl, which is second to none. The Gopher Bowl. Cool. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> but we have gr we got great facilities. They got a new track now on our campus that that Aren't they that putting they're in filling a new up. Field too? Well, like well, you know, we've got an indoor in indoor sack, and we call it indoors uh, indoor facility. We got a grass field right next to it, and then we got the bowl. But our baseball field and our softball field, they're second to none. I mean, they're great. They're great. It's a great facilities, and you know. Looking at it, I've been here six years now. Excuse me, but I've been here six years, and I think the kids are excited about being here because of the kind of people we have in leadership. Well, man, I'm, I'm definitely excited to get to know some of your athletes. Now, before I let you go, Coach, is there any upcoming events or something that the community needs to be on notice for to come out here and help support these young men? Yeah, we're going to start. We're going to have our first scrimmage on the 17th in Waco, and then on the, uh, on the 25th we'll come back. And we'll have our first game here in the bowl. So season's starting. Um, we're taking it day by day. Our motto is prove it. And we got to prove it every day. And not looking too far forward, dealing with what's, what's happening right now. Well, hey, Coach, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Let me go ahead and get to know some of your seniors. We'll be right back. All right, thank you. Great day to be a gopher. Thank you, buddy. Oh, no thank problem. You thank you.
All right, folks, big shout out to our keynote sponsors, Max Sporting Good and uh, Shock. Go to shock.com, enter code SEMIPROLIVE to receive 15% off of your full order. Well, this is just uh, an initial look at your senior captains for the Grand Prairie Gophers. So I'm gonna go across, we do individual interviews. We'll start off and get everybody's first and last name. Uh, my name is Kelton Moore. And what year are you? 2024. 2024. My name is Sammy Rangel, class 2024. My name is Israel Lumida, class 2024. My name is uh, Will Hernandez, class 2024. All right, man. Well, we'll just read it like a book, man. We'll start off with my guy. Let's step in front. We'll let the cap. Well, I'll let you step in front of your fellow captains, man. So, man, tell me about this season. You're coming up, you're captain this year. This is your senior year or your junior year? Senior. Senior year, preparing to get ready to go for college. What does this opportunity and this season mean to you? Man, it means a lot, man. I, I think me and my team finna go far this year. Uh, we all we all know each other for a long time. We've been together, and we think we got something going for ourselves, you know, different from last year, for sure. Well, I mean, growing up, I, I didn't hear a lot about Grand Prairie High School as far as, like, you know, the pomp and circumstance. But coming up to the school, this is a beautiful facility, man. It, it looks like this is a fun place to go to school and just get to be here every day. So tell us about the community and what it's like to just be a part of this Grand Prairie family. Uh, it means a lot to me, man. I, I've been here for four years, bro. I ain't got nothing but love from all my coaches, you know, all the teachers and stuff, man. I, I love it here, man. It's my home, for real. All right, man. So let's get a little bit deeper into it. What position do you play? I play safety and receiver this year, playing so, both sides. So what are you expecting from you and your teammates as you go into this season? What do you guys expect to improve upon? Well, improve upon? I think I think we need to improve like on our like like our willingness to play, like our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, last year, you know, we ain't really had that much heart. You know, we'll go down, touch down, we'll start feeling down. This year, I think everybody got that drive, that hunger to, to actually win, even if we down to lose, you know. So we finna win this year, for so. sure. I like that, man. Now, if somebody wants to track your career or follow your highlights, you have the social media, somewhere I can watch you? Yeah, uh, my name, Kelton Moore. Uh, you can go to my Twitter at KT underscore ZZ, and my IG is at KT underscore ZEEE. -E -E. All right, man. Well, let's swing over here to your co-captain. We'll switch spots. The ice up, man. You know, he, he knew the correct place to keep the ice. You got a very strict coach over here. He's particular, which is a good thing, man. I, I grew up with Coach Peach, so I understand. So, man, uh, just get your first and last name. Uh, which graduation date? Sammy Rangel, class 2024. All right, man. You're a senior. You're a captain. Yes, sir. You're coming to your own. And there's nothing like a senior year and being captain on the football team. You're a big man on campus. So what, what, what aspects of being a senior captain and a leader on this campus are you looking forward to for this I just, next season? I just think, you know, coming with being a captain, just be a positive example to the, not only the football team, but the school as well. And just being a good leader, bringing positive vibes, you know, and just bringing my teammates up. So, man, what do you think some of the, the traits are that you that you distinguish to your coaching staff and your team that they felt that this was something that you put on your shoulders? Because uh, you obviously showed them some leadership yeah. ability. I just feel like that around my teammates, you know, I get along with everybody in the, in the room, even from the varsity to the JV side. I feel like I'm a great leader, you know. I'm someone they could look up to, and I could just be the leader that they follow. Tell us about this community. Uh, something about this GP community is, man, we're not worried about nothing else other than us, man. It's just all about the family, anything else, the haters, the noise, the good, the bad. We just care about ourselves and what's in between these doors. All right, man. Now, before I let you go, uh, do you have any... Uh, my bad. Uh, senior year, recruiting season. Yeah. How excited are you to make the leap? to the college level? Oh, I'm very excited, you know. That's one of my dreams to play at the next level, no matter what division. I just feel like I can make a big impact on that next level. I like that, man. Do you have any social media somewhere we can follow your clips yeah. in your career? Uh, my Instagram and Twitter is Rangel, R-A-N-G-E-L underscore era with two R's. I like that, man. Yes, well, let's hand the baton, the gun show. <laughs> That, he had to take out the earrings because he doesn't want people looking at the bling. He wasn't looking at these guns and he didn't help no, the fellow over the no, summer, man. Sir. All right, man. So what's your first and last name? Graduation? first name Israel Lumade, class of 2024. Class of 2024, man. Sir. So you're coming up on your senior year. Now, you've been a part of kind of the rebuilding. Coach has been here for six years. Sure. Your four-year period has been the largest portion. So you guys are kind of uh, his first group of kids that he had to have his hands on for the full time. Sure. So, Tell us about the relationship with this coaching staff over the years. Oh, one thing I'm gonna say about our coaches, they they on the earth. They like they it's not all about football for real. It's like familyhood. 
So I give it to my coaches because they always there outside of football and in football. Man, so what's been, I know you have a lot of moments left to go with this senior year, but sure. what's been your favorite moment being a gopher? Come my favorite moment year. being a gopher, oh, uh, you got to be when I'm on the field. Like, I'm an old another person when I'm on the field. I, it's always showdown when I'm on the field. So I'm going to give you that for sure. Well, playing at the Gopher Bowl, man, not everybody gets to play in the bowl stadium. Sure. I think there's more kids that get to play in covered stadiums than get to play in bowl stadiums. So what's the atmosphere like Friday night being out here at the Gopher Bowl stadium being surrounded by the crowd? Oh, uh, we got we got Ella fans, much love for our fans. They come and support us. Like, we really got everybody coming to support the Gophers. We got the old grandparents behind our back. Love it, man. Sure. Now, uh, becoming a senior captain, tell me about the the responsibility and how it feels to be a, a chosen leader uh, amongst your peers. Oh, it feels really good because we've been, all four of us been a part of this since our sophomore year. We've been, like, we had to, like, step up faster than everybody in the group. So I feel like it's really a great opportunity being a captain and being a leader because we feel like we got, we got the young Nick, the younger ones to be, like, step up and get ready when it's their time. All right, man. Do you have any social media, some place we can follow your career, keep up with your Yes, sir. I got Instagram, wake em up 5 underscore, underscore, and I got Twitter, Israel OG3. I like it, man. Sure. Way, I'm going to go ahead and swing over here to the big man, number 73. Now, I don't know the history behind a number 73. I know even at Lamar, we put our best lineman in 73. Sure. It's usually a tradition. Do you have any... You know the tradition behind the number 73? Yeah, so I choose the 73 because uh, my mom's birthday is 1973. So I represent my mom. Okay. My well, hey, a happy coincidence, man. Yes, well, hey, well, big shout out to mom. But uh, let's talk about it, man. You're one of the leaders in this program, a rebuilding program, but it's just a winning atmosphere. I can feel it when you walk in the building. What's it been like? What's the difference between this year and past years being a gopher? Um, this team has heart. Like, we, like, bond so well with each other. And uh, like during practice, we can talk next to each other, but it's all love. Like we make each other better every play, and it's just it's a it's a community. Like we're like we're like brothers. Well, speaking about the community, man, tell us about going to school here at Grand Prairie High School. It's a beautiful school. A lot of us have seen the stadium, but we didn't really take the time to look at how nice the school looks. What's it like going to a school like this and being in this community? Well, the games, the atmosphere is crazy. Like the whole most of the town pulls up and. It makes the it makes our energy go up, and our, like when, when we go out there, we know it's gonna be uh, the stands are gonna be full, and we're gonna be excited to go out there and run and play. All right, man, senior year. How excited are you for the transition into college? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, we'll see who what the future holds, and uh, see where we go to college and play football. I mean, that's that's the overall goal. That's what we're trying to been trying to do for uh, the past four years. All and, right, man, uh, before I let you go, do you have uh, any social media, a place where we can track your career, keep up with your highlights? Yes, sir. So my Instagram is Will with a one, Hernandez. All right, Will so. Hernandez. That'll be our final caption. We'll be right back. You're watching Semi Pro Live. Channing Humphrey with Semi-Pro Live. We are here with the official Gopher Drill Team. All right. Well, we're going to get a little bit more information about this fine organization. We're going to start off with the captains. So we'll go ahead and get a quick introduction. My name is Dominique Perry. I'm second lieutenant of the GPET Drill Team at Grand Prix High. My name is Juanita Fuss, and I'm the GPET's captain for this year. My name is Isabel Rodriguez, and I am Spirit Officer for this year. My name is Juliana Leva, and I'm your Social Officer President. All right. 
Well, uh, we're just trying to get a feel for this Grand Prairie community, the school, what it's like to go to school out here, what it's like to be a part of this community. So just tell us, how have you enjoyed the past couple of years getting to represent this school and be a part of this Grand Prairie community? Um, I love being a part of this community. I grew up here and being a part of it helps me realize how involved I love being and how much I love being on the team and being a part of the school. Well, you know, it's it's Texas. Friday Night Lights is the is the big thing. Everybody wants to be a part of it. You guys don't even play football and manage to be just as much a part of the show as the players on the field. So, what attracted you to becoming a part of this drill program? And what's it like just getting to perform on Friday nights? Uh, the feeling is just unreal. All the adrenaline when you're going down that tunnel, ready to perform, is just really amazing. And what attracted me more to like this program is just to see the community all together and just doing events like this that brings us all together. It's really fun and enjoyable. It's a privilege to be here too. All right. Now, a lot of people don't know, but I know because I've done events with Kayla Jones, the drill team is not cheer team. Uh, yes. Tell our audience a little bit of the differences between being part of the cheer program and the drill program and why you chose this to be your home and, and what are some of the highlights of being a part of this program? Um, the difference between cheer and drill team is drill team we perform during more during football, we perform during half times, and cheer they perform more basketball season. Um, yeah, that's really fun. Oh, yeah. for Well, you get the softball question. Tell us about being a part of this Grand Prairie community. Um, something about being a part of this community is probably getting together and us being able to cheer everybody on. Um, every game, rather it's whatever sport it is, we like to cheer everybody on and make sure that the community feels really happy and that's that's mainly our focus. All right, well we got the drill teams. We'll get some camera time for all of these lovely ladies. <laughs> Thanks for coming out and sweating out here in the sack with us. We'll let them get back to their picture time. And this has been just, we're out here at Grand Prairie High School Media Day, the Gopher Drill Team. We'll be right back. You're watching Semi Pro Live. All right, folks, Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro Live. We are back. We're here at Grand Prairie's official media day. And uh, we got a member of the coaching staff. So, Coach, uh, can we get your first and last name and what position do you uh, take guide of? Uh, I'm Alex Hesselbrock. I'm the freshman offensive line coach. All right, man. Well, you're dealing with the boys fresh into high school, man. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. You got the interesting one. Uh, probably one of the hardest jobs, but I will say this. Every kid remembers their freshman coach. I still remember Coach Turley. Yes, sir. In his uh, 1991. Uh, for Taurus. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Coach, man, tell us about uh, getting to work with the youngest members of this organization. It, it's really been a good summer. Um, you know, kids are really coming along well. They're really gelling well. Um, you know, it's a it's a blessing to be their a lot of their first year coach. A lot of them haven't played football before, so just kind of teaching them that brotherhood and to love the game and you know just the the, the great things that can come from it. It's it's been a blessing. I, I really enjoy it. So you guys, this is a, a six-year administration right now. You guys are on year six. This is the year the kids look like they're revved up, ready to go. So yes, sir. Uh, you're on the front line as far as the new kids coming in and getting them adapted to the program. Yes, sir. Have you noticed the change in, in the kids and, and their, their wanting and their attraction to this program in this school? Definitely. You know, you notice that there's a real strong work ethic when they come in. 
Uh, we start summer success in the summer. Uh, a lot of the kids, they come in, they're ready to go. Everybody from freshman all the way up to varsity. Uh, so they're, they're ready to get, it, get this thing going and have a great season. All right, expectations for the freshman team? Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Go out there, uh, play each game. Um, our motto is win the game. Doesn't matter who we're playing, win the game. Man, love that. Great quarterback answer. We'll see you guys next time. Let's yes, sir. Thank for you. Uh, we are back. So, Coach, what's your first and last name? What position group do you uh, run? I'm Jonathan Ulan. I coach the tight ends and fullbacks. All right. Well, a fullback is starting to become a little bit of a position you don't see as much, but you're seeing a lot more tight end play, and it's becoming more and more of a crucial part of the offense. So tell us about that transition and how you're preparing these young men to become more active in this offense. For sure. Um, my guys are just, you know, they're one of the hardest working groups. You know, they're they're – right next to the big boys every play they work hard um going from fullback to tight end it's not that big of a transition because my guys are used to going in either spot um the the group itself that i have the couple guys that i have they're they're just amazing young men they're going to grow up to be to be even better men um and i'm thankful that i've got the the guys that i have to work with so is that part of the evolution in the game? Because beforehand, uh, fullbacks used to be almost, they were running backs. They practiced with the running backs. You didn't really see them as much with the tight ends. Now you're starting to see those two positions put together to make uh, more versatile athletes. Uh, tell us about the evolution of the position and how you guys as coaches have kind of changed on how you guys are coaching it. You know, going from maybe the, the running back spots or more fullback, true kind of blocking style is a little bit different. Um, going from maybe getting carries and stuff like that to be almost glorified offensive linemen. You know, it's, it's kind of a hard transition, but we know our role on the team and we know what's expected of us and we know how important our role is. Um, so going from a running back to more of a blocking style, it's not a big deal for us because we know what we have to do in order to win ball games. All right, Coach. Well, I appreciate you taking time out today to interview me. Uh, your tight end and fullback coach for Grand Prairie High School. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. So, uh, sir, what is your first and last name in the position group that you coach here? I'm A.J. Ulan, and I'm the assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, and I coach quarterbacks. Oh, all the fun positions, man. Well, <laughs> this is a school that has a rich tradition in quarterbacks. You've had a couple guys make it to the league, big-time names. So yep. tell us about running the quarterbacks in this offense over here for this uh, storied Grand Prairie offense. The, the thing that we're working on right now is having a, a quarterbacks that can do a lot of different things. They've got to be under center. They've got to be able to take a snap from gun. They've got to be able to read a defense. They've got to be able to uh, read as in a uh, traditional zone offense, a wishbone offense. They're also going to be a blocker and, and a single wing type setup so we've got all sorts of things going on for people to get ready for us and, and so to be a quarterback it's not just being able to throw a pretty spiral it's also about being able to understand the difference in the coverages understand what we're doing as an offense where the ball's going what the blocking schemes are what are all the routes where the reads are on those routes and, and be able to be on the exact same page i am so these quarterbacks are extremely smart, extremely well versed in what they're doing and have worked their tail ends off to get where they are. Man, speaking of that, uh, one thing that I've ran into that I've seen a lot uh, from when I used to play, I played a little bit of arena, nothing basic, uh, nothing major, but there's, there's a, been a generation of quarterbacks who act like they can't go under center or they don't possess the skill to receive the ball under center. Talk to us about the, the idea behind you making your quarterback so versatile. The, the thing that happens when you're under center is that you can get things done. It happens quicker. The, there's a, there's a two-second delay, basically, when you talk about taking a center from gun. So when you're under center, and that's the reason why the pros do it and, and a lot of colleges do it, is because when you get under center, things can happen a lot quicker and the, can the, the ball can hit a, a lot faster. We're also doing it for the uh, simple fact that 
in the in a wishbone type situation, you can run some of the um, option football that you have to do. And again, it hits real fast. Love it, coach. I love it. Now, before I let you go, do you have any tips or advice for any of the young quarterbacks out here who might be watching this? Uh, make sure that you're learning how to throw the ball properly. Uh, number one, and, and a lot of a lot of young quarterbacks tend to tend to push a ball because the ball that they have is too big for them. And so, if you learn how to throw a, a, a correct size ball that goes with your hand and all that, then you're going to be a lot more successful in what you're doing. And two. Learn the game of football. Don't just go out and, and think that you played it on Xbox or something and you know the game. Study the game. Watch it on TV. Hear the analysts on TV. Learn what they're looking at. See what they're doing. It's not just about throwing a ball, even though that's important. Man, I love it, Coach. We'll be right back. You're watching Semi-Pro Live. Great interview. Appreciate Thank that you. one. I'm definitely going to clip that into a reel. <laughs>Hey guys, Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro Live. Coach, what's your first and last name? What position do you command up here? First name is Hector, last name is Palma. I coach the inside linebackers. All right, hey, he's coaching the dogs. All right, man, well, tell us about coaching linebackers in this day and age, man. Uh, I mean, you know, I've been blessed the past three years to have two great linebackers. Uh, you know, in 2021, when we won the playoffs, uh, I had two guys that, you know, led the district in tackles. And then the guys coming up behind them, you know, have been able to learn from, from those guys. So it's been, I don't want to say easy, but it's been great to have those guys, you know, see what the seniors were able to do that year and learn from them. So it's been easy for me. So how have you, what adjustments have you made to your coaching style as the game has evolved, especially the position at the linebacker position, where you, at a certain time, point in time, linebackers are almost glorified defense linemen to now, you're almost a safety if you're playing middle linebacker. You're expected to cover a lot of space on the field. How have you been transitioned? How have you changed your coaching? And how have you, how have the kids and the athletes that you attract to the position changed? Um, obviously, as the game changes, you know, you want more athletic linebackers. You know, those guys are able to make the reads, run reads faster. You know, we we'll always play downhill first. Always, you know, try to fit the run game first. Um, but again, I've been blessed to have great athletes, you know, able to diagnose the play, hey, pass, I'm bail out, get to my hook curl, make sure that, you know, I got my zone covered. Um, as far as adjusting, you know, it's all about reading those cards, you know, read your run key first, read your keys first. They always got to take you where the play is going to go. All right, Coach, man. Appreciate you taking time out of your day. We'll be right back. Semi-Pro Live, Grand Prairie Media Day. I appreciate you. No problem, Coach. All right. Let me get you next, Coach. And we'll just swing this way. We'll have the pictures in the background. All right. All right, folks. This is Channing Humphrey with Semi Pro Live. We've got another one of these awesome Grand Prairie Gopher coaches. So, Coach, uh, what position do you command, and uh, how long have you been with the program? Uh, first of all, my name is Rich Gant, um, and I coach running backs, and I'm special teams coordinator and the uh, head strength conditioning coach. All right, man. Well, tell us about how long you've been with the program and wh what changes have you witnessed? Because it feels like it's just a different uh, energy around this place. Well, I've been with the program going into my sixth year this year. And the things that I've noticed that change the most is uh, the mindset of the kids. And in order to have the mindset of the kids, we have to start doing a little bit of things differently as it pertains to, to weights and conditioning and, and programming. So, as you know, here at this school, I've noticed that we don't have uh, an assortment of different talent levels. This is not a football factory. So what we have to do is go to, back to the drawing board and figure out a way that we can manufacture talent to get everybody up to par to even the playing field. I like that. Now, uh, we had a chance to walk through that uh, weight room, state-of-the-art weight room, man. Tell us about that facility, man. It's beautiful. In yeah, place. well, when we talk about the weight room, I can stick my chest out real big because that's one of the best weight rooms you'll get in the state of Texas. It's and we huge. got a couple of, yes, 28 racks in there. Um, we have a couple of things that we're going to get different. Those are Gen 1 racks, and 
it's probably Gen 3 right now. So that's in the making too. Just take a little bit of time, but we're going to get that taken care of. All right. Now, last but not least, man, the evolution of the running back position. Hate to have to talk to you about it, but what what uh, changes are you making to your coaching style? And uh, how are you coaching your kids a little bit different knowing that the, the value of the running back is not respected as it once was? Well, here at this school, we respect running backs because in what I'm looking for the running back is a multifaceted back. I want to be able to have a running back that can get 20 carries or 15 carries and being able to split out as a X or Z or split him out as slot, preferably a slot, to take advantage of the middle of the field, pull linebackers out in space. So I played running back myself. I was 220 pounds as a linebacker coming out of high school. Obviously, the evolution of the game changed. It evolved to what it is right now, so you have more hybrid backs. So I'm not teaching my guys to be bruisers and run down a hill. Our stuff is predicated on a wide zone concept, so we need guys that are really, really good at sticking a foot in the ground and getting vertical, but we need multifaceted guys that we can also throw the ball to out the backfield. Now, when it comes to our running backs being devalued, mm, I can't say that not at this school just because we have the philosophy of 70, 30, 60, 40 type deal. If a team takes away our running game, we're going to throw the ball 70, uh, 70 percent of the time and run it 30 percent of the time. It, it, you know, it just depends on what situation we're, we're uh, faced with. Well, just a quick follow up. We asked about the evolution of the running back position. Better question is the evolution of the running back coach. Uh, now with the running back being more involved in the passing game than ever, you guys have to be more involved in passing concepts. You guys have to be more involved in the actual game plan of the passing game where before you might have just had to prepare your running backs to block and run. So uh, tell us about that. Well, what I like to do, and this right here it separates backs from me. I think what separates a good back from a, a average back is the ability to have vision and read if you don't have vision can't make the proper cut you know some running backs are made uh, uh, in the weight room and on the practice field and some running backs just come out the womb <laughs> just really really good right but as it pertains to our guys being able to be multifaceted individuals what i like to do is work on all our protections and if you work on the protections you know the defensive fits it makes it easy for us to do what we want to do. We can't throw the ball to a back or a wide receiver uh, if, the, if it's not protected. And those guys, we like to take advantage of our guys in space. So being able to teach those guys how to get the head, head around, how to stop the rotation of the ball, teaching the passing tree, all those different things are, are crucial to our, our development of backs, and it's also crucial to what we're trying to do scheme-wise. Man, appreciate you taking the time to interview with me. A great interview and very insightful into the evolution of the position and how uh, hey, some of you guys who are in the area who have kids who are running backs who are in select football who've been wondering about the evolution. Hey, take the kid over here to Grand Prairie. They have a plan. Yes, we'll sir. be right back. All right. It's always a good interview when the coach asks you, are you going to be live? But all right. <laughs> What's your first and last name? What uh, position do you pilot? Uh, I'm Coach Kelly Benware. I'm the head offensive line coach and recruiting coordinator here at Grand Prairie High. Recruiting coordinator. So you are every parent's hopefully best friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what right. we try to do. Well, tell us about this program and the position of kids that you particularly coach. Well, I've been here for six years. This is my sixth year, starting my sixth year. Uh, Which is a good sign. It is a good I've sign. To about five coaches, and it's like the whole staff has been we have, here for. We have, we have, a, we have a great here. staff. We have a great staff here. We all work hard. We all pitch in, help each other out. Uh, my, my position group, as you know, I've got five guys on the field at the time. Uh, they're some of the hardest working young men I have. They will run through a brick wall for me. Man, uh, I you know, I, I don't know what else to say about them. 
they're, they're, they're very fine young individuals. Well, let's talk about the evolution of the position, man. It seems like uh, you looked at the NFL draft, the guys that took home the big bags with the big guys up front. Starting to, yes, sir. He's starting to. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Well, tell me, has that changed your coaching style or the guys who are attracted to your position? Because there's some guys who might have been trying to play tight end that may have been looking at that. Draft yeah, yeah, right we, we, we got, yeah, we we got a six seven kid that's playing right tackle for us. Uh, <laughs> was was wanting to be a tight end. Now realizes a hey, tackle's probably my spot. You know, so that's got, got him. Hey, it's a live interview. It happens from time <laughs> to time. I think we were going to have an athlete jump into us. It would have been cool in the background, yeah. but, you know, yeah. dangerous for the interview. But uh, back to, as you were speaking about your 6'7 athlete that you got playing tackle. Yeah, he's sophomore, Cortavis Tisby. Uh, we respect big things out of him this year. But, yeah, he, he played uh, a little bit of tight end last year as a freshman. And okay. uh, during offseason, uh, we said, hey, uh, you know, you're a, you ate one too many cheeseburgers. You're now, you're now a right tackle. So that's where he's going to play for us this year. Um, looking for big things with them. Uh, as far as the whole offensive line, you know, I got Will. Uh, Will is my one of my captains. Him and him and Julian Maldonado. They're bump, I have two seniors this year. Number seventy three. Uh, number seventy three. Yes, sir. Number sixty five. Uh, both of them are my senior leaders on the line. Respected big things out of those guys. Uh, and what else to say? I mean, the rest of the guys are returning. Guys are just kind of filling in the spots. Reverse. We're hoping for a big year this year. Uh, I was just staying quiet. They told me if I stayed quiet long enough, I might get something I could put on a reel. But nah, nah, coach was on his best <laughs> behavior today. Well, anyway, man, as far as uh, recruiting coordinator, man, NIL is the new thing on the block. How has your job changed with some of the new changes in the recruiting and so, rules? So the NCAA, you know, the NCAA was changing. They, they, just, they just added some more new rules this year. It's constantly you have to keep on ball with that. Uh, I mean, you know, grades are the number one thing. Mm. That it, 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 when I sit down with coaches, coaches come talk with me and Coach Tademy, the grades are the biggest thing. That's what we try to stress to the kids every day: your grades, your GPA, your grades, 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 grades. Um, you know, and that, that's honestly the number one factor in recruiting: is hey, do you make the grade? Because there's plenty of other guys that look like you, but if you have a you know a 2.0 and that guy's got a 3.8, I'm going to go with the 3.8 because I ain't got to worry about chasing for grades. That's really the main thing about recruiting that, you know, as, as I fell into my lap last year that I've noticed is it's the grades. Man, well, hey, Coach, appreciate you taking time. The interview with us will be right back. Yes, sir. All right, we got another one of this, uh, another member of this amazing coaching staff over here at Grand Prairie High School. So, Coach, uh, what's your first and last name? And what position do you run up here? I'm um, Kevin Nichols. I am the head freshman coach and offensive coordinator. All right, head freshman coach, man. You get them when they are making that transition, and you were the first line of defense while we're trying to turn them into young men. So, tell us about uh, just your job as freshman coach and the type of relationship you have with these young men. Uh, so this is my fifth year as the freshman coach. Uh, man, it's, it's been, it's honestly a good thing. I really enjoy it. Uh, you get them while they're young, you kind of get them ready for what the program has to offer for them. So you kind of catch them at their early stage to kind of get them in rhythm and, and, and get them disciplined and ready to go. So when they get to the big lights on Friday nights, they'll be ready to roll. All right, coach. So this might be a subject that you can talk to some of our select parents who may be watching this. Uh, the word on the street when you hear these select parents, oh, junior high football is so trash. Da, 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 da. Look, can, we, can we explain to the parents what these junior high coaches are trying to do and how that interacts with your job, the freshman coach, when you get them their first year out of junior high? Um, I think uh, junior high, they're just getting them back 
uh, to the to the fundamentals, I guess. So uh, you got so now you got select football that's pretty big, and you got these kids that playing 30 and 40 games, and they playing with different teams, and they got different playbooks. So when it's time to to get back to the fundamentals, you kind of get away from it uh, sometimes. So I think they kind of bring them back in and get them back to the basics of football and prepare them for for the next level and the speed of the game. Uh, one thing I always want the parents to pay attention to is what, your, what offense or what defense is your local high school running? And if you've been, your kid has been the star player on some shotgun spread select team. Oh, he's good right there. On some shotgun spread select team, and then now he's transitioning into a program that totes the pill. They, they have a run first identity. The junior high coaches are going to have to break some of those tendencies. They're also going to have to run an offense that may not be as exciting that you're accustomed to. All right. But tell us more about that and, and, and managing parent expectations. Uh, I think while you got. Teaching assistant. I think you have to kind of be open uh, to everything. Like you said, it kind of makes you a better athlete when you can when you can do things. So if you're playing in different systems, you're kind of getting that experience. And uh, I mean, it's at any level of the game, you get coaching changes and you get personnel changes. So. You have to be able to adapt, so I don't think, you know, you should you should be hung up on my child only does one thing, or he should be in this type of system. I mean, you got to be fluid for the game and just know that it can change at any time. So I might be in a spread now, but I may be in a wishbone or a wing tee or a powwow somewhere. So just kind of be open to it, let the child be an athlete and, and kind of develop. Special question for you. Uh, got a couple of parents that. It's pretty, pretty much too late for this advice, but this is advice for parents that have kids in junior high who will be going into high school next year. What do you want your kids doing that summer before they go to high school? Uh, just just really staying in shape. I think that's the biggest thing uh, at that age. It's kind of hard to, to have a routine, build a routine, and kind of be disciplined. So I think staying in shape and, uh, and just being in a routine of getting up and, do, and moving around and doing something every day, it will definitely benefit you by the time you get to that next level. All right, Coach, appreciate you taking the time to interview with us. We're at Grand Prairie High School Media Day. We'll be right back.
right, media day. We'll pop in on some more athletes. Some people we ain't talked to before. All right, man, number 22. So what's your first and last name, man? Where you from, what year are you? Moses Hernandez, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and class of 2024. All right, man, tell us about uh, Go For Football, man. It's a different energy out here than some of the years in the past. So, man, what's different about yeah. this program? Well, well, we have a lot of energy here, and it's very positive out here. And, and yeah. Well, most people don't get a chance to see the facilities or this, this school that you guys get a chance to attend. Yeah. What's it like being able to go to a school that looks like that, first off? I mean, it's very positive out here, and everybody's always hopping us up. And when it comes around football season, that's where that's where all the energy's at. All right, man, if we want to track your career or see some of your plays during the season, you have any social media, somewhere we can follow you? Uh, yeah, on Instagram, 4pf.moses.underscore. All right, man, we'll see you guys next time on uh, Semi Pro Live. Right. <laughs> no, you're doing it. You're the next guy that I got. Okay, I want you to chalk and then and then you follow Will. You got me? Are we are we good? Everything positive. All right, we are back. I'm going to have to adjust the camera up a little bit higher, man. So uh, this is the fabled uh, former tight end that is now a left tackle. But let's get your first and last name, man. And, uh, My name is Cartavius Tees. I'm a class of 2026. And I'm just here to have fun for my family, my brothers, and my team. All right, man. Well, let's talk about it, man. You are uh, one of the more hyped up players in this organization. And you're kind of uh, the generation of players leading the change over here and, and changing the energy around this program. So what's it like going into this season with all these changes and all this energy around it? I'm just very excited to play football. Put my whole life behind the game. I'm just ready. Can't wait. I'm ready. All right, man, making the transition from tight end to tackle, uh, which means you have speed and footwork. How do you feel that that's going to translate into being the left tackle this year? So I'm not one of the biggest. I got to be one of the fastest. And being one of the fastest means I got to have foot, uh, amazing footwork and amazing hands. All right, man. Do you have any expectations on the season? To win. All right, now, before I let you go, man, do you have any organizations or anybody you want to give a shout out to, show some love to? I got an opportunity. The man above. I like it, man. Uh, also, we're definitely going to need to track your plays. Uh, what's your social media if we want to keep up with you? Uh, Cartavius Tisby, well, Cartavius T69 on Twitter and 3430.tay on Instagram. All right, well, I guess we'll pan out by letting you guys know this is a sophomore athlete. This kid is huge. We'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live. All right, man, we got some members of this sophomore unit. Well, excuse me, JV unit of the Gophers, man, the younger generation, man. So uh, let's get your first and last name. My name is Janari Smith. Angel DeLeon. Jacob Escobar. Francisco Silvano. All right, man, as younger members of this Grant Prairie Gophers team, you guys, well, hold on, let me flip the screen real quick. It just makes it easier if you flip the screen, you got four people. So, all right, man, you guys are part of this new generation of athletes coming into the program. And a part of this excitement that's around this building and this community is directly because of you guys. So what do you guys think that has changed around here? And, and what's up with all the energy and the expectations that's been coming along with this new class of athletes? I feel like the energy definitely changed. We got a lot more talent, a lot more bodies here, you know? Just got new people coming in, putting in the work every day, new energy, new players that showing their stuff. We'll be good this year. Yeah, like he said, I feel like we got a lot better talent and uh, more players that are willing to put the work in. People are more hungry. 
All right, man. So, what are y'all expectations on the season? Uh, I think we're gonna really, yeah, we're gonna win everything for sure. Definitely making playoffs, being better than last year. Don't know. Sure. Gonna be better than last year when games for sure. Playoffs. Swain here. I think we got the quarterback. Yes, All right, sir. Man, first and last name, where are you from? I'm Peyton Reese. I'm from Grand Prairie, Texas, and I'm at Grand Prairie High School. All right, man. Well, uh, you're running the offense for the JV unit, man. Tell us about the, this offense and being a quarterback at this school. This has a history of some great quarterbacks that have come through here. Oh, uh, yeah. So we have Savion Red that recently came through here. That was did amazing things in the second round of playoffs for this team. Uh, I think we have an amazing, some amazing weapons that uh, came here, and also and we have an amazing defense that is going to help us uh, win a lot of games. I see a lot of points and a lot of wins coming in the future. With the evolution of the quarterback position, how have you changed your game to keep up with some of the more, the new expectations that comes along with playing your style? Uh, I've changed more of my game to a lot of the Patrick Mahomes game, to not being able to always run the ball, but being able to expend, to extend the play to make things happen. All right. I'm never gonna leave a lineman out, man. <laughs> yeah, he says. Over here with the soda, he ready. He ready to run anyway. What's your first and last name, man? Where you from? Uh, my name is Sebastian Miveros. I'm from Mexico. Mexico. All right, that's what's up, man. So, uh, how do you like being a Grand Prairie Gopher, man? Tell us about this community and getting to play football at the Fabled Warrior Bowl. I mean, it's fun. I like playing. I mean, it's kind of hard at the same time, but I try my best at least to keep up. Hey, man, what's the energy been around the school with all these new changes to uh, the program and, and some of the new exciting things you guys have I mean, going on? It's, at least we're going to feel a lot safer. Like, we're going to be more security, like, more better. Better chance to be safe around the people, you know? All right. Well, hey, man, we're going to fade off. We'll be right back. You know what? I, I just pop up while they make a TikTok videos, and we're gonna just bust in with an interview. So, man, what's your first and last name, man? What class y'all are? Uh, Kevin Moore, 2025. You know what I'm saying? Shaquan Washington, 2024. Uh, Stephon Pitts, 2025. Bradley Smith, 2025. Julius Allen, class of 2025. Yeah. All right. So we got over here. This we got DBs and this receiver unit. So we got quarterback, we got running back. DB. Receiver. Running back. Right. All right, well, hey, man, I'm, I'm here, here amongst, amongst friends. I went to Lamar High School growing up. We didn't, uh, we, we didn't expect you guys to have these type of athletes, you know, back in the day. Now you guys do. So what's been the key to, you know, the different group of kids that are attracted to coming out here to this program and being a part of this football team? And what's been the change in the energy with this program where – you guys are getting a lot more community support and a lot more expectations out of the team from the north side. Uh, shoot, they just, they come, they see we work hard. Uh, I think the lift -a was like a big part of incorporating the community and everything. Well, you must have won that. You got the names on the gun, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, like a family. We compete hard every day. Everybody like that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, everybody just want to come and be a part of it. Really, our team, our coaches, we play together as one. They just want to be a part of something special. All right, all right. Hey, let me see so, Juan, show me. You know, I just popped up in the middle of that TikTok video. It's Pan over here, number 23 of the JV, man. So, uh, what's your first and last name? What year are you? I'm in class of 2026. All right, man, you're part of that new generation of athletes that is kind of helping rebuild the energy around the program, man. What do you like? Uh, what are some of the highlights of being a part of this program and going to this school? Highlights, uh, we we always like we're always competing with each other in practice, but when it's when it's time for the game, we, we go our hardest as a team together and compete against others the best we can. What was something that you wanted to improve on in your game this summer, getting ready for this season? My game, if I'm gonna be honest, I would like to improve like my attitude during the game. You know. Stop and stop like like letting stuff get to me and stuff. And I like that, man. That's, that's a, actually a great uh, that's great self reflection. There's a lot about you as an athlete and as a young man. Sir. But uh, before I, I let you go, man, do you have any social media somewhere we can track your career or maybe uh, 
see some of your plays as the years go on? Uh, my Twitter is Delon Washington. Delon Washington, Washington T without the O N. Delon Washington two. And my Instagram yk dot l l l a a d e e twenty three. All right, we'll be right back. And we'll just pan on over, man. Oh, my bad. I thought I was in the back of the picture. I'm sorry. I just saw the flags. <laughs> Although they should flip that around and make that a picture too. Oh, we'll just turn this pushing match into an interview. Yeah, all right, man. What's your first and last name? Where are you from? Uh, Joaquin Lozano, I'm from Grand Prairie, Texas. All right, your graduation class? Uh, 2026. All right, man, tell us about this program, man. Uh, you have a very eccentric lineman, Coach. A lot of expectations put on this offensive line for this year. How have you guys been preparing for this season? Uh, we've been preparing in a lot of ways, and I think we're going to be very good this year. All right, man, what were some of your personal goals over the summer? What were you looking to improve on yourself individually? Uh, my technique and my strength and right. just getting to know my teammates better. All right, what are your personal expectations for the season? Um, just to learn and get better. I like that, man. Do you have any social media, somewhere we can follow you as your career goes on? Um, not right now, but in the future. Oh, and it's recruitment time, man. At least get you a Twitter and put your first and last name on. But we'll have this Instagram and all that posted later. You're watching Semi Pro Live, but we'll, we'll swing around here. We. You got number 78, man. What's your first and last name? Where you from? Uh, I'm Christian Franklin, class of 2025. I'm an office lineman, center, tackle. And this season, it's going to be good because we've been learning a lot, getting better every single day. What were some of the things you were working on this summer to improve your game? This summer, I've been working on hand movement, my feet work, and then getting to the second level and just working hard every single day. The young center is watching you play the game. What kind of advice would you give him? Uh, just keep practicing to just learn the technique. And just... Hey, we'll swing over here to his contemporary man. First and last name, where are you from? Ivory Hayes. I was Texas class of 2025, nose guard. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, you're playing a, a position that is increasing in value by the day, man. Tell us some of – what are some of the – the particular skill sets to make you a good nose guard? Uh, technique, being stronger, make sure I got my good hand movement, make sure I have good speed. What were you looking to add to your game during the offseason this year? Really to the offseason was really technique. Getting stronger was a good thing, but working on my technique was a big thing for me this summer. All right, man, you have any social media where you can track and keep up with your career goes on? 180 underscore business on Instagram. All right, we'll be right back. All right, another group of this varsity gopher program. Yeah, we just popping up on people while they pass it. Oh, what's your first and last name? What position you play? Uh, Joseph Puente, that play middle linebacker. All right. Alberto Montilla, outside linebacker. Peter Brego, corner. All right, man. So let's, let's squeeze together, get all y'all in the shot, man. What have been some of the things about this program? You can get in here too, big dog. What are some of the things, some of the changes that you guys have seen around this program? Some of the positive things you guys have been seeing going around? Bro, my, my don't go until tomorrow. Focus. More focus. Hard work. Uh, I feel like the coaches have gotten better at like, working with us and like, making sure like we're right and make each other right. And then I say the energy. There's a lot of energy this year. Speaking of energy, <laughs> tell us about this Grand Prairie community and the support that you guys get playing here at the Gopher Bowl. Oh man, the coaches are great. They help us. They help us so much. They keep this energy up. They made us, they gave us goals so we could push ourselves higher to a higher position. And we're going to be better this year for sure. I like that, man. Same question, man. Just got to gotta keep working, keep, keep the grind up. We're going to have a better year this year. All right, man. We'll pan out. We'll be right back. Wait, 
Oh, okay. I, I knew that. Oh, I feel the man too! Send it to us. Come here in the Gucci. Y'all ain't even in the Gucci. Hey, I know we're not about to redo this. How about you? I got this. I got this. I got Like, nah, bro, like right here. Well, we got our senior leader over here. Junior, cowboy hey, hat, pancake. That's my senior right there. All right, He's my, over here. All right, all right. Let's please get all y'all hey, in here, man. Hey, we already had an interview with the youngest. Hey, we can hey, just stand we up there. We got the seniors, we got the juniors, we got the incoming juniors. You know what it is. We're at Hey, Hey, we coming this year. That's all. That's all. That's all y'all gotta know. We got something coming this year. We got, we got, we got something to fight for this year. Hey, we got something to prove, bro. We coming back. We coming back. Hey, man. Everybody down on us. Hey. We're we gonna show everybody. We're gonna show everybody, man. They looked down on us last year. They looked down on us last year. They, they, we got something to come in this year. We got something big and better. For 50 Ocho, just watch that. All right, well, speaking of that, man, the, the change in the energy up here, tell us about this program and some of the changes that have gone around hey, here. This program, got the it's been very good. You know, all these coaches over here, they help us. You know, they push us through. They help us in the class as well. You know, we become leaders. We become disciplined. You know, that's what we ask for. You know, these coaches, very, you know, they help us with our life. You know, they teach us, though. You know, so this program is very good. Uh, I recommend it. You know, it helps everybody. So that's all I got to say, man. You know, so hey, everybody watch out. Tell us about the transition into becoming more of a leader on this team as you have gone into your senior year. We asked that both of you. Man, leaders, you see as a freshman, sophomore, junior, you see everybody looking up to those seniors, you know what I mean? And they always looking up. And then, man, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it, it's don't. a family. It's it really a family. Is. You what it is. It's not a team anymore. It became a family. Hey, you got to take care of your brothers. brothers. Everybody you see is a brother. Blue jersey, 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 white, gray jersey, jersey, white jersey. We brothers here. You know, we hey, brothers. We, we family. Freshmen look up to us. Hey, we all brothers around here. So we all take care of each other. You know, that's how it is. We grew up. We like this. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Grand Prix. Go for it. Hey, if you want to know the truth, you just go and find a group of linemen. They'll tell you something real. We'll be right back. Appreciate y'all. You gotta start the NIL stuff early, you know what I'm saying? We got Drip Humphrey out here at the Grand Prairie High School facility. So, hey, man, you're, you're a man with a couple of choices for high schools, you know? Uh, you live here in Grand Prairie. I think you live closer to South Grand Prairie than you do up here, but it's your first time coming up here to the beautiful Grand Prairie facility. How do you like the school and just the overall vibe up here? Uh, it's pretty good. The facility's great, and most of the high schools that I usually go to, they don't have like this. What are you, what you talking about, big dog? Like a weight room. Uh, they have a weight room. This is not as large as that one. Future GP Gopher. Uh, where you at right now? I'm, I'm a Gopher. He about to be a Gopher. He, he a Gopher in the future. I mean, he, he got a long. He's only eight years old. He probably he didn't tell y'all that. You said what? He uh, we're live on YouTube and Facebook right now. Oh, I knew that. All right, you left your hair like that, so you had to get an interview, man. What's oh, your yeah. first and last name, man? My name is Kingston Malafu. All right, tell us about this program, man. You guys got a lot of uh, positive. This is the first time I've seen this, just kids wanting to come hang out at Grand Prairie High School, yeah, the younger generation. a lot of positive energy, good energy around here. So tell us about that, man. What has led to that change? What are some of the things that you guys are doing a little bit different that just has the overall feel and the community wanting to I think, support this program more? I than think ever? it's just the players overall that have good energy, that bring the energy. To the program i've been here for four years so i know it's pretty good so yeah. into your senior year your your role on the team has changed you're more uh, more leadership is expected yeah. of you expected to lead how have you handled that transition and what are some of the positive uh, things that come along with it i'm more of a lead by example type of person not very verbal 
verbal leader. So a great interview. <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I'll try to do my job about the best I can. Show these, the younger people. All right, man, you have any social media if we want to keep up with your plays and track your career? I got an Instagram. You can find me at M-A-1-A-F-U. All right, man, we'll be right back. Grand Prairie High School. Oh, hold on. Are them shock goggles? Hey, hold on. Shout out to Grand Prairie with the... Are those from shock? They are from shock.com. Go to shock.com. Enter code semi-pro-live. You get 15% off of items like these goggles and their sunglasses and the shock visors. You know, Grand Prairie High School representing the shock. Throw, throw my commercial. I've been, I've been running the shock commercial this whole time. And then looky here, somebody pops. So let's just get a let's zoom in on how high quality these goggles are, man. You know the embroidery right here on the side. You know it's just this is a well-made pair of goggles that you can find at shock.com. <laughs> well, let's capture it on film. Now you know this this could be clipped and, and posted on social media before some games, but you know. Young men will do anything to impress young women. <laughs> Got All right, big dog. Go ahead and slide the helmet off, man. We gotta get an interview everybody while we uh -oh. out here. Uh oh. Hey, this is my first time. So. All right, man. What's your first and last name, man? Where you from? Spencer McLeod. I'm from South Dallas. Okay, okay. What, what led you over here to a life in Grand Prairie? Oof, the coaches. They they really like get you ready. They teach you. And my teammates. I like my teammates. They cool. And they're they're fun, you know. All right, man. So. What have you noticed that's changed in this program that's got all this positive energy around here? Oof, like our excitement has changed. Like this year, they said last year that the excitement was a little bit good, but this year we're excited. All right, man. What have you been working on during the summer to improve on your game? A lot, a lot. Catching, footwork, a lot. They have been improving me and I'm working to get better. You got any social media if we want to track you? Yeah. Sir Spencer 23. D1, no, D1. Underscore dot Spence 23. All right. We'll see you guys next time on Semi Pro Live. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.
And you come on in here. Where you want me at? I'll just at the end. Hey, Marissa. How you doing, Marissa? Hey, Marissa. 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 Hey, People actually paid the tab to have me out here, so I want to come give them some love. So uh, who's our Booster Club highest officer who's on staff right, right now? President. Oh, the lady who's been quarterbacking me all day. So first and last name? Uh, Claudia Reese. And who's your son on the team? Peyton. He's oh, going to be a uh, sophomore. Yeah, he had a great interview. Well, man, tell us about this program, man. It doesn't go without people like you volunteering your time and your money and your effort to, to put on great events like this. But tell us about this school and this community. And, and if you have a young kid in the area, why you should choose Grand Prairie High School? So this is my first year being a president for the research. So I'm learning as I go. Uh, so uh, we, are, we just kind of want to be here for the boys, for the community, and kind of just making sure they have a great experience. Uh, so we're reaching out, and we've been reaching out to our community, actually, uh, just to make sure we are, you know, supported and so forth. We have a football program that we're actually trying to promote here. Uh, any uh, businesses and so forth that they would like to uh, come out and support GP. Uh, we have uh, pages, half pages, quarter pages, whatever you guys like to do. And we actually uh, will give out all of our programs out every week and every night to all of our I'm going to be honest. In the past month, I've interviewed three Booster Club presidents. You're the first one that just opened it up in the interview and started hey. selling stuff. ABC always be closing, so I respect yes, that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's I mean, I got, we, right we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta do, we want to do a lot of stuff for our boys, and that one way to do it is to reach out to the community and help us out. We can't and all do it all. Money at your yeah. All the parents keep complaining about how expensive football. You gotta be closing. Yes. You gotta be closing. We got to. We got to. That's closing. what I'm saying. We got to. All right. Well, but we also have, some of your staff. We have Rachel. I mean, I'm sorry, Rebecca. Rebecca, she's our treasurer. Who's your Rebecca son? Hill. Uh, Sammy Rangel. All right. And then we got Victor. How you doing? Also. Sam, Sammy's my son. Sammy. I want to get you an individual because, you know, he gets lots of high moms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't get much of the dads. And then we got Marissa. Hello. Who's and your then, son? Uh, Jewel's Taurus. Yeah. And who's the little one you were out here watching me at uh, Drag You Back from? That's Carter over there. Okay. <laughs> little Carter. Bianca. Bianca Brown. I'm the uh, secretary, and my son is Cameron Ferguson and James Nobles Jr. Oh, okay, she got two out here. I do. Uh, I'm Mark Reese. I'm the burger flipper, and my son's Paige Reese. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting acquainted with our team right here. I'm the football announcer for the past three years. DJ, play the music. I'm going to be plugging these guys with the programs, with the food that they're selling. So you will hear that on the microphone for these guys in the Booster Club every game. The voice of Grand Prairie High School. Oh, I'm Matthew Davidson. You can follow me on Twitter, at MDZGo. Once again, at MDZGo. Go for football, man. We're here. We're here promoting these kids. It's a beautiful thing out here. The voice of go for football. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We in this thing. All right. Well, tell us about tell us about this awesome school and some of the uh, upcoming events that you guys have going on. I'll, I'll let Rebecca kind of go. Um, awesome school. My son's a senior, so he's been here all uh, four years. Um, he's our fourth baby to go through Grand Prairie High School. Mm, okay. um, so we're we love Grand Prairie High School. We love. Oh, uh, so they couldn't get the black shirt. You had to be, you know, you had to be around for a while to get the black yeah, shirt. Okay, I was trying to figure it out. Okay. So, but we, we love uh, we love Coach Hanami. We love what he's doing with this program. We love these coaches, uh, what they do for these boys, and I mean, we're just happy to be a part of, of the GP community. Um, big things coming up. Um, first game, August twenty fifth, a home game. That's a big thing coming up. Um, what else we have coming up? First day of school on Monday. <laughs> That's a big thing coming well, up. What I want to talk about with you guys is in this new time of open districts and NIL, you guys had a lot of choices. You chose this school and this community to send all four of your kids. Didn't think twice about making any of them warriors. What is it about this place that makes this community special that you want your kids and your family to continue to be pillars in this community? Um, one, we have a rival school across the tracks. Uh, my kids don't wear red, so <laughs> that's the first. That's the first big deal. It's all about GP. I wore the black semi pro line <laughs> shirt. I didn't want no smoke. No, but really, um, the coaches are different here. The coaches uh, reach out 
for these bo to these boys. They care about these boys outside of football. They're building them to be great men in our community, great leaders, um, and it just goes far beyond the field. And and we that's what we look for. It's not only about being on the field and being a great athlete, but being a great student athlete and a, and a great um, citizen of the community. Yeah, that's that's definitely. Uh... That is definitely a difference from other uh, other schools. I mean, we I've coached little uh, li little league football, select football, uh, seven on seven football, and so we do have a lot of insight from other kids that go to different schools all through the Metroplex. You know, uh, I don't want to name no what the school what schools they go to, but from you know from that you know uh, speaking to them uh, from the coaching side, you know they they a lot of them just care about football, not outside. You know, when football when they're playing football. They care about them, but at, after football, you know, uh, this is this is a really a difference from the, from. I, I believe that's a difference from you know from the, these coaches here, from the other ones. So. We're trying to create a family. Yeah. We're trying to really. create a family. You know, Coach Tadamik came up with you know the the G family, and uh, we're just running with it. Hopefully, we can uh, get together and help each other out. Well, tell us a little bit more about your experience in school. You got two kids in the program at the same time. So yeah. tell us about this school, this community, and wh wh you had a lot of choices in the area. You chose this to be your home for the next four years. What led to that decision? Well, I mean, I had already heard about the program before I decided to put my kids back in school because um, we had just moved over here and they were in homeschool. So then we... So you actually wanted made to play the choice football. to put your kids back yeah. in the public school. So yeah. this was a school, you had a lot of choices, and you actually picked this one. So I let's did. talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it was a, I've no, heard nothing but good things about Coach Tademy. So I wanted somebody, like he said, that cared about my son and not just how good my son was at football. So that made the biggest difference. Let's talk about the school. I, I've seen the Gopher Bowl before. I never actually paid attention to look at the school. It's a beautiful facility. It is. Uh, did that factor in any into you choosing this to be your son's educational facility? No, not. I mean, not the football um, part of it because I wanted him to get a good education. Yeah, everything. So that everything played a role in it. So it was academics as well as football. So I wanted him to be somewhere where he would be comfortable for three years. Because this year he's in the tenth grade. Then my uh, my other son is a junior. He just transferred here. Because uh, he moved in with us, he's my stepson. Okay. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to choose a good school for them with a good program. And we got son baby. walking up, getting some attention over here. He's my baby. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and catch up to the head coach. We'll get a little bit of a closing interview, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and pan through this amazing uh, weight room facility. Uh, this is one of the larger weight rooms that you're gonna see in the state of Texas. I know a lot of people have their weight rooms uh, attached to their indoor facilities, but it usually doesn't take up the full width of the actual indoor. Nice, cool place for some of the younger kids and parents to chill out during this media day. AC on blast. It's awesome in here, but just a beautiful state-of-the-art facility. Got 28 different racks in here. Before we take off, we're going to go ahead and catch up to the head coach and close the show. And this is this is what you don't see at a lot of high schools. We got head we got the head coach of the football team out here referee in a community football game. Put the ball down. Let's go. Hey, you got the ball. Let's go. You're the quarterback. Let's go. You go. Oh, this guy, he's a former GP. Oh, what? He's a 
Where, where are we at? Which one? On the black? Well, before we close the show, let's get ahead and get a word from some of a former athlete. We got a former uh, Grand Prairie Gopher great. So, yes, Adam, sir, what's yes, your sir. first and last name? What class did you graduate with? Uh, Adam Sandoval graduated in 2020. All right, man. Well, you're one of those guys who sticks around the program, comes and supports his, the new Gophers and the new generation. Yeah. Tell us about this school and, and someone who's from a past generation. You know personally some of the changes that have gone on over here and the change of energy yeah. and support from the community. So just tell us the difference you've seen in your alma mater. I mean, it's just uh, there's a lot of more commitment and dedication to the program. I mean, going here, you know, Grand Prairie has a history, um, a football team, the football team not being the best, but um, I've always wanted a, a great football team, knowing that Texas is king is football is king in Texas. So. Over the years, I've seen it grow better, better each year, especially with the coaching staff. Coach Tadme does a great job here. You know, everyone really loves them, the players too. So, and it's cool to see a lot of commitment from the players and even like the parent, the community behind us as well, growing every day. Well, unlike some of these players, you have firsthand uh, time playing in the Gopher Bowl. Tell us about playing in the Gopher Bowl or just having a bowl stadium in uh, high me, school. Me personally, I didn't play uh, football. Um, here I came and played baseball here, but I mean, I was really involved with all sports. You know, I'm, I, I love being an athlete growing up um, and coming, you know, here when I started doing social media for high school sports, you know, at a young age, you know, it was easy for me to do any game here. And then I just grew a love for it. And then honestly, like the Gopher Bowl is one of the most underrated stadiums in the state of Texas. I mean, the atmosphere you can get inside of that thing when it's packed out is crazy, you know, and, and, and when you're in the community, you wouldn't even know it's here. Just, it always sneaks up on you when you're driving by, but, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just pretty cool to have a football stadium on campus as well. You know, very convenient. We, and we can really call it ours because it's our home. <laughs> <laughs> a little slug in there. Yeah. Well, before I let you go, man, you are a, a, a go for great that people want to keep up with. Do you have any social media if somebody wants to follow your journey through life? Yeah. Um, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at AFGP Sports or AFGP underscore sports. Um, myself, I cover high school sports all over the state of Texas. You know, I'm coming back for, you know, our rivalry here at Grand Prairie versus South Grand Prairie at the Gopher Bowl. You know, but you follow me on Instagram now and stay tuned. You see all the games I'll be at this upcoming season. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Well, let's go ahead, panel. We'll find head man in charge. He's out here doing some community relations firsthand. I saw, I saw you run. There you go. Hey. Hey. All right, guys. All right, head coach, before you dip off, man, before we close off the broadcast, I, I felt like after a very positive, I, I just want to say you guys have a, a, a very diverse, well-spoken, very thoughtful group of young men up here. Very, uh, I had nobody who was rude. Nobody has any negative energy. So a very positive program and everybody's excited for the season. So before we go ahead and close this show down, I just wanted to let you give us the final word for Grand Prairie High School and just to set the tone as we get ready to go into the art first scrimmage of the year. It's a great day to be a gopher. Hey, you know, we can end like that. I like it. Grand Prairie High School Media Day. We'll see you guys next time on Semi-Pro Live. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Anytime, all right? No, no I definitely want to come get some I want to come get some games. <laughs> come to some games. Hey, you met Ben.